Clark Gable is one of the most successful actors of Hollywood, who is also known as the King of Hollywood. But becoming the King of Hollywood was not an easy task for him. He is the King of Hollywood in real life, and his life was filled with tragedies. Do you know which tragedies are? If no, then please join us in this captivating exploration of his life, delving into the highs and lows that shaped his remarkable career. But before we embark on this journey, we kindly ask you to subscribe to our channel. If you're a fan of Clark Gable and enjoy immersing yourself in the magic of movies, this is the place to be. Let's dive into the extraordinary story of Clark Gable, the King of Hollywood. Clark Gable was born in Cadiz, Ohio, on February 1, 1901. He was a single child of William Henry Gable and Adeline Herschelman Gable. Clark's father was an oil field worker and his mother was a housewife. Gable was named Bill after his father, but he was always called Clark and referred to as the kid by his father. The first tragic incident happened with Clark when he was only 10 months old, when his mother passed away due to a brain tumor. Clark's father returned to the Ohio oil fields and he was sent to live with the Adeline family in Pennsylvania. Later years, his father marries Jenny. The couple swiftly claim Clark and move to Dylan's hometown, Hopedale, Ohio. Clark Gable spent some of his happiest days in Hopedale, particularly in a house where his stepmother Jeannie pampered him as her child. Being the lone child, his stepmother lavished him with attention and treated him like her own. She keeps him trimmed and neat. Thanks to Jeannie, Clark was regarded as an excellent student who loved the arts and music. Young Clark is an expert in showcasing his musical abilities while participating in an adult band. The Clark family relocated to 3150 Alliance Road the following year in 1917. It's currently Pelmier, Ohio's County Road 125. It's close to Akron. For a brief period, he rode a horse every day to and from Edinburgh High School. Clark soon became weary of working on farms. At 16, he dropped out of school and started working at a tire factory in Akron. When he went to watch the Bird of Paradise performed at the Akron Music Hall one day after work, Clark Gable had no trouble deciding what he wanted to do, acting. He volunteered at the Playhouse, doing anything they asked of him, including sweeping floors and running errands. He even had a walk-on role as an extra, since he felt that acting was better than farming and factory jobs. His first acting experience was cut short when he found out that his stepmother, Jenny, had passed away on January 11, 1920, at their farm from cancer and disease. It was another tragic incident that happened in Clark's life. Following Jeannie's passing, William Clark relocated to the oil-rich lands of Oklahoma, prompting his son, Clark, to follow suit. After laboring in the oil fields for two years and accumulating sufficient funds, Clark ventured into another theater troupe. Regrettably, the troupe soon faced financial ruin, leaving Clark and his companions stranded in Butte, Montana. Eventually finding his way to Oregon with a fellow actor, Clark engaged in various jobs before securing a spot in yet another theater ensemble. It was there that he encountered Josephine Dillon, a theater manager and mentor, who took a keen interest in refining Clark Gable's acting skills. Dylan financed dental work to close his front tooth gaps, styled his hair, and coached him on modulating his voice to a lower pitch. Despite her efforts, Clark's prominent ears remained a significant hurdle in his pursuit of a film career. In later years, Clark underwent ear surgery, which somewhat alleviated their prominence. Despite the age difference, Clark and Josephine tied the knot in December 1924 and relocated to Hollywood. Financial constraints led to Josephine's acting class earnings being invested in Clark's pursuit of a movie career. Initially, Clark took on extra roles in silent films while their relationship faced strains, culminating in separation in 1926. Subsequently, Clark sought companionship with affluent women hoping to advance his career. He briefly departed Hollywood and contemplated returning to his home state. By 1930, Josephine initiated divorce proceedings on grounds of desertion. The dynamics of Clark's marriage to Josephine were perplexing and unusual. 
He consistently maintained that their marriage was never consummated and was solely a matter of convenience. During his separation from Josephine in 1930, Clark encountered Maria Langham while working on stage in New York. Despite Maria, or Ria's, seniority and age compared to Gable, her affluent background from a prominent Texas family facilitated support for his Hollywood aspirations. They wed on April 3, 1931, marking Gable's second marriage and Rhea's fourth. Under Rhea's influence and assistance, Gable's refinement and sophistication grew, leading to significant improvements in his film career. He secured his initial speaking role in The Painted Desert, alongside William Boyd, predating Boyd's renowned Hopalong Cassidy persona. MGM recognized Gable's potential post his performance in The Painted Desert, offering him a contract that propelled him into leading roles, notably in Dance Fool's Dance with Joan Crawford, marking the beginning of a three-decade stint as a prominent leading man. His career highlights include starring roles in films like Red Dust with Gene Harlow in 1932 and teaming up again with Joan Crawford in Dancing Lady the following year. Notably, the filming of Dancing Lady was interrupted due to Gable's hospitalization for infected teeth, which necessitated the extraction of all his teeth, resulting in production delays and financial consequences for the studio. As a form of punishment, Gable was loaned to Columbia Pictures for the low-budget comedy It Happened One Night, a project he disliked and deemed inferior. Several actresses rejected the film before Claudette Colbert agreed to star in it, doubling her usual wages. Both Colbert and Gable initially considered the film unremarkable, but it garnered immense public favor. It marked the sole Academy Award Clark Gable ever received, and the film itself earned five Oscars, reinstating Gable's standing with MGM executives. In early 1935, Gable starred alongside Loretta Young in The Call of the Wild, during which rumors of a romantic involvement between them surfaced. Young later discovered her pregnancy, prompting her to conceal the truth due to contractual moral clauses that could jeopardize both their careers if the studio found out. To avoid scrutiny, Young took an extended trip to Europe, and their daughter, Judy, was born later that year. Young went to great lengths to portray Judy as adopted, concealing the fact that she was her biological child with Clark Gable, a truth Judy only uncovered years later. Despite this, Clark Gable never publicly acknowledged his daughter. In 1935, Clark Gable appeared alongside Loretta Young in The Call of the Wild and also had a role alongside Charles Lawton in Mutiny on the Bounty. Gable was initially hesitant about the latter role as he was required to shave his iconic mustache, but he found solace in receiving an Academy Award nomination. The following year, he starred opposite Jeanette MacDonald in San Francisco, and in 1937, he was cast alongside Jean Harlow in Saratoga. During the filming of Saratoga, Harlow experienced health issues and collapsed in Gable's arms during a love scene due to exhaustion after some days on the 7th of June, 1937. Jean Harlow passed away at the age of 26. Clark Gable is set to attend Jean's funeral alongside his new romantic partner, Carol Lombard. However, it will take two more years until 1939 for Gable to finalize his divorce from Maria Langham and marry Lombard. During that pivotal year, Gable will achieve iconic status with his portrayal of Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind, prompting the studio to increase his salary to meet Maria's divorce settlement demands. Following the divorce, Maria will remain in Hollywood for a few years, engaging in relationships with other actors but ultimately choosing not to remarry. Eventually, she will return to Houston. Maria Langham passed away on September 24, 1966, at the age of 82, and was laid to rest in Glendale Cemetery in Houston. In Houston society, she was primarily remembered as Clark Gable's former spouse. The studio executives insisted that only Clark Gable could portray Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind, despite Gable's refusal to adopt a southern accent. Carol Lombard had aspirations of playing Scarlett O'Hara opposite Gable, but the role ultimately went to Vivian Lee. Gone with the Wind 
became one of the most renowned films in history, solidifying Clark Gable's legendary status. The film received 10 Academy Awards, although Gable, nominated for Best Actor, did not win, while his co-star, Vivian Lee, did. The iconic line, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn, became one of the most memorable in cinematic history, even though it cost the studio $5,000 to include it, a price deemed worthwhile. Clark Gable and Carol Lombard were both divorced from their previous spouses, Maria Langham and William Dick Powell, respectively, before they tied the knot in Kingman, Arizona, on March 29, 1939. Gable regarded his time with Lombard as the happiest period of his life. Together, they purchased a farm in Encino, California, where they enjoyed raising various animals and managing the property. Shortly after the outbreak of World War II, Lombard engaged in a bond drive while Gable filmed Somewhere I'll Find You with Lana Turner. Tragically, Lombard's life was cut short when she perished in a plane crash during her return from the bond drive. She and her mother were laid to rest in the same mausoleum as Jean Harlow at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. Gable was devastated by Lombard's death and enlisted in the military, serving in the 341st Bombardment Group. Despite being hit multiple times during missions, he survived and resigned from service in 1944 due to age restrictions. Afterward, he resumed his acting career, starring in films like Adventure in 1945 and Homecoming in 1948. In 1949, Gable married Sylvia Ashley, but the marriage was short-lived, ending in divorce in 1952. He continued his career, albeit facing setbacks like MGM canceling his contract in 1953. Gable's personal life saw ups and downs, including struggles with depression and alcoholism. In 1955, Gable married Kay Williams Spreckles, marking his fifth and final marriage. Despite facing personal challenges, Gable continued acting, appearing in notable films such as The Misfits in 1960, alongside Marilyn Monroe, Montgomery Clift, and Eli Wallach. Tragically, Gable passed away from heart-related issues in November 1960, shortly after completing The Misfits. His son, John Clark Gable, was born four months later. His legacy lived on through his son, John Clark Gable, and the indelible mark he left on the history of cinema.